yeah, now that I'm not crying hyperventilating, um, <laughs> so I had COVID like three and a half months ago and I quarantined and got over it and was very safe and I got 100,000 tests afterwards to make sure I was negative and all these doctors told me I couldn't get it again. So I flew to uh, Rwanda, Africa like five days ago and I just got here and <laughs> tested positive and literally the fucking government showed up at my place and came and dragged me away from everybody I was with and I don't speak the language and they came and locked me in this fucking room and I can't leave and it's really scary <laughs> I don't know why I have it again and I'm not with anybody that I know <clears throat> and I can fucking for one to Africa <laughs> and I don't know how long I'm gonna be here and they won't tell me anything, so. Hello fam, welcome to the African Diaspora News Channel. I am Wangil Zalalam bringing you this report. As you just saw, our Karen uh, arrived in Africa, in Rwanda, for charity work and she was really upset by the way she was being treated. She explained herself that she was positive, uh, she tasted positive for COVID and she waited three weeks and she came until she was clear. But when the government took her, her tests, her results came positive again. So they took her to quarantine and they wouldn't let her go out because she's positive and there's a rule and regulation in africa africans are really taking this seriously they want you to think we're not with the we've seen all the articles bbc and all these big corporations uh, medias were writing about us uh, that it, it can't be trusted how come it's so low and how come you know is it because they're poor they're having all this hypothesis and guesswork because they they can't believe how come these africans are not dying you know they're poor and they're they're black <laughs> I, don't, I i really don't know with these people sometimes it's just anyways back to the point so in her video she's complaining about the government forcing her to quarantine and girl do you know the season it's COVID, and we take we don't take it lightly we take it very seriously and maybe that's why we're not getting it as much as y'all and for her for me it's the entitlement the kind of entitlement she had in her video she's crying you know like okay you want us to feel bad for you you had COVID 19 and then you know you start a little bit to 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 have empathy for her and then she's mad at the government for forcing her to do that like doesn't she understand the concept of the 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 the, the, the season that we are in we are in a big crisis, worldwide crisis. And Africa, we are doing the best that we can to protect our people and the governments are trying, believe it or not. And this girl comes and she says it's charity to help us, to help the Rwandans, apes, I think, no, gorillas. What was so urgent for her to fly to Rwanda with this pandemic going on, her even catching uh, COVID and then, you know, uh, clearing it out of her system. As she said, after three weeks, she's, she's back and she's still positive. That's what they found out. And my question is, what, what, what was so urgent? What, what happened to the gorillas? Like, well, what is going on? And uh, she had to fly in, you know, for charity work, you know, that savior mentality that we all know and appreciate. She came and she's positive. So what does she expect the government to do? To let her loose, to do whatever she wants to do? You know, when they say quarantine, it's not a suggestion. It's you have to do it. And that's exactly what they did. They forced her and she's like, I don't even know the language. Girl, what do you mean? In Rwanda, they speak English too. They speak French, English, Swahili. They speak all kinds of languages. But I do know they speak English. It might not be like your accent. It might not be American English, British English but still you will be able to communicate the same way i'm sure if you hear me you can you can understand me i might not speak like you but i'm sure you can understand me so girl even that on its own to get some empathy from people i can't even speak i'm in the middle of nowhere in a shithole <laughs> as her president would say shithole country and by the way i'm not calling R rwanda a shithole country it's the cleanest country actually go google it go youtube it watch watch some videos they're, they're very impressive and this girl says i don't even speak the language i'm here in the middle of nowhere don't know what to do and these people it even takes a long time and i saw a girl debunking a rwandese girl debunking what she's claiming it takes 24 hours for the results to come back 
really. Is it, does that happen in America? I heard people complain about that. You guys don't even get 24, within 24 hours. So, <laughs> so she's lying. Yeah, we can agree that she's lying. And on top of that, to get sympathy, she adds in salt and some kind of seasoning, black pepper here and there to make, make it sound like she's really in trouble and people should get angry at the Rwandan government. And I'm like, no, like I don't feel sorry for you in the first place. You know what kind of season we're in. If you're not sure if you, if you, you know, if you don't want to risk your life and other people's life, you stay where you are that you didn't do. You came to Rwanda. They checked you out. You have the virus in you. So isn't the right thing to do to put you uh, in a room so that you don't go out and give it to their people? How are they wrong? Explain to me what does not make sense to you which which part didn't make sense to you for you to act so entitled and so mad that this happened to you you know the entitlement the entitlement of it is what's really annoying you know the way she said it it's like me me have you, have you seen my skin like me they did this to me in rwanda the nerves they had that's what i got from this video by the way and that is exactly why i called her a karen in africa she brought her karenness and all, all her you know this superiority complex to us and you know slowly but surely it's it's not working anymore it's getting old we're starting to understand that no you're not sorry you're not superior miss little thing you came here to help the gorillas <laughs> I don't even know why I find that funny. Good, I'm not saying the gorillas should not be appreciated. By the way, they're a huge uh, deal of like for tourism. It has, they, they have a lot of impact for Rwanda, that's for sure. But like <laughs> during this time when people are actually dying for her to feel it in her heart to really help those gorillas and coming to Rwanda and you know, this happens to her. The nerves that the Rwandese have for, you know, putting her in a room so that she doesn't transmit whatever she brought to Rwanda, shame on them. <laughs> I don't know you guys, like sometimes I, I it's looking like watching this videos actually makes you understand what is going on in the world sometimes when you just you know uh, i live in africa so everybody i see looks like me and videos like this go viral and you look at it and you're like oh my god there are people like this that actually think this way and i mean thank you karen for showing us how how much of a princess you are and how we should they should have treated you that way uh, but i'm sorry it didn't happen i hope as soon as the quarantine is over you leave rwanda and i mean they they made you angry so maybe you don't have to go back again you know and i don't think they'll miss you a lot i'm not trying to be mean but it's she's so annoying like the way she was speaking the way she sounded like how dare they i'm like up here and there's just you know some peasants and the the, the the audacity for them to do this for me to me and put me in a room like throw me in a room and i don't even speak the language which is a lie i just said that and you know like randy speak english yeah this is crazy and the vibe i got from her is i'm doing something good for them they should be happy and bow down and they didn't so you know that anger and that's why she's crying i don't think she's crying because she's in the middle of nowhere and she doesn't know what to do she's more of crying because she, maybe she's this is not her first time in africa she went somewhere or even rwanda and she was treated like a princess that she is and this time that didn't happen because I, we're in the middle of pandemic boo boo if you didn't notice so i think the anger comes from there and that's why she got emotional and I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Tough luck. This is how it's going to be going forward. And we are serious when it comes to, you know, quarantining people and testing in Africa. And, you know, facts are facts. And we are doing way better than any other continent. And it's even puzzling them, writing articles so crazy saying, is it the poverty? Is it because they're not recording? You know, all these things, is it because they're genes? <laughs> The scientists are wrecking their brains because uh, we're not affected as much and I don't know what to tell you. We're being really cautious, careful, we're taking care of ourselves, we're washing our hands, we're sanitizing, you know, wearing our masks, so maybe you should try it, you know, and, and before you go to Rwanda first, maybe you let it settle down a bit and everything is okay and maybe then you can come and, you know, help the gorillas that you wanted to help. 
that's, that's all I have to say, you guys. But we really, really love to hear your thoughts on this topic. What did you think about this young lady crying about being quarantined because she has COVID, she was uh, her results came in COVID uh, positive and. Yeah, what are your thoughts? Do let us know down below. I am Wangil Zalal. I'm bringing you this report. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.